Hello, and welcome back to Workbench Wednesdays. If I had a dollar for every time I said, use more Flux in a video, I would have a handful of dollars. Flux serves a more useful purpose than making puffs of smoke. It attacks contaminants and breaks down the thin oxide layers on the metal surfaces so there is good contact with the molten solder. But there are a bunch of different types of fluxes and it could be confusing on which to get. So let's break down the different types, see how they get applied, talk about how to clean them up, and then at the end, I'll give some suggestions. I also need a shout out to the Element 14 community members who gave me tips for this video. With that, let's go flux. There are four types of flux bases. First is rosin, which is the most common. It comes in non-activated, mildly activated, and activated. As you go from left to right, these clean better but leave more residue. Resin is a synthetic material and tends to be more stable than rosin while leaving behind less residue than RMA. The organic and inorganic fluxes are water soluble and almost always need to be cleaned. In general, as you move from left to right on this chart, the flux type cleans better and is more aggressive. This IPC chart clarifies solder types, the residue left behind, and whether or not they contain halides. For example, REL0 is a resin with low residue and no halides. Also notice, I did not say no clean is a type of flux. In general, the low residue fluxes like RMA are marketed as no clean, but more on that later. Next, let's take a look at different forms and packages that flux comes in. This paste style looks like wax, but it is much softer. You can apply it with a brush or cotton swab to specific parts of a circuit. The viscosity causes it to stick in place, but your precision is kind of limited. I find it works well for through hole parts with large pitches. Also, this style is great for soldering wires since you can dip them directly into the flux. Next is liquid, which comes in at least two packages, jars and pins. The liquid style from a jar is best applied with a brush, but I suppose you could use a cotton swab as well. This flux can go a long way since it is easy to apply a small amount. A downside is that it does not stay in place. Here you can see it ran the direction that the board was tilted. This is especially annoying if you're soldering at angles other than flat. The pin style has a foam tip that you dab where you want the flux to go. When the tip is new, it is very precise. But in my experience, it eventually gets torn up. By the way, this pin happens to be the only water soluble flux I'm showing in this video. Everything else is either rosin or resin. Speaking of resin, my current favorite flux is Chipquik's SMD-291. It is a tacky gel and comes in a syringe. It sits between the liquid and the paste. When applying it, the flux stays in place and different tip sizes are useful for different applications. The syringe has a variety of different tips available. Looking at the datasheet, this is resin style and it is no clean. Also, technically speaking, it has a pleasant odor. I actually like the way that it smells, but I'm not going to use it as an air freshener. One more flux to remember is the core found in solder. For example, this roll of wire solder says RA, which means rosin activated. And this lead free roll says WSW, which is a water soluble flux. Now the data sheet for the lead at RA solder says it does not need to be cleaned, but it also only refers to corrosiveness, not conductivity. As I said, the SMD290 gel in a syringe is my favorite style. Second would be the paste, and third are the pin styles. Now, let's go compare what each type of flux leaves behind. These PCBs are from the MLCC cap loss episode. I applied some of each type of flux to the four test points and then hit them with a soldering iron set to 350 degrees Celsius. This way we can see what each type of flux leaves behind. Now, I did do something kind of dumb. I did not want flux from tinning my solder tip to mess up the results. So I used a brand new tip, but never tinned it. This turned out to be a huge mistake. In retrospect, there would have been no flux left over after tinning the tip. So I way overthought that. Back to the comparison. One issue is I have no way to compare how much flux of each type I applied, which might affect the final results. After applying heat to each board and wiping them with a dry cloth, notice how they compare. R, RMA, and RA all go from no residue to a lot of residue. The water soluble does have some residue, but it is kind of tough to see. My other intent was to show how different activation temperatures affect each of the fluxes because you should choose the one that is compatible with your type of solder. Except with all of the fluxes that the Element 14 community sent me, only one specifies an activation temperature 
and only a couple say anything about lead and lead-free solder. So, my takeaway here is, whatever flux you intend to buy, double check to see if the datasheet says something about a specific temperature or the type of solder that it is compatible with. Okay, now that I have a bunch of boards with flux on them, let's talk about cleaning. As I said earlier, I do not consider no clean as a type of flux. For example, on these two from the same manufacturer, one type says clean and the other says no spill. Astute viewers might remember that on the IPC chart, there was not a category for spill. Looking at the no spill datasheet, it says the residue is safe and does not require cleaning, but then it also explains how to clean it. Here is a real example where flux residue bit me. This power supply is supposed to output negative 12 volts. However, on the scope, I was measuring 7.7 volts RMS with over 3 volts of ripple. So I cleaned the flux residue, but I made no other changes. Okay, well actually I made a whole lot of changes. This was the last thing I tried. Then the scope showed 11.746 volts RMS, which for me is close enough to 12 or negative 12. In this case, that was just the flux residue from the solder paste. Should it have caused a problem? No, but it was just conductive enough to mess up the voltage divider. So even if your flux says no clean, clean it off anyway. Now, cleaning flux is a two-step process. First, you need some solution to dissolve the residue. Then you need to scrub the board. In the past, I used a toothbrush, but I found it did not get into SOIC and smaller pitch parts very well. Today, I prefer to use a fine hog or horsehair brush instead. And the second and most critical step is removing the dissolved residue. I think people skip this step all the time. They throw some IPA on their board, let it dry, and then wonder why it's sticky. Here's how I remove the residue. I apply a small amount of IPA and then use a clean room wipe. These are polyester cloths that don't tear up or leave bits behind. Then I brush the circuit with the cloth and IPA mix. This action causes the cloth to soak them both up, removing the residue. After a light rinse of the board with fresh IPA, I dry it off and the result is a nice clean board. By the way, in past videos, I confidently said you should always add more flux when soldering. Yes, it will help and I still recommend it, but realize if you use too much flux, you must clean your board after. Any unactivated flux left behind might be conductive or corrosive. Last, a real quick point about water soluble flux. While you only need water to clean, it must be distilled or deionized and you have to have it at an elevated temperature. So for prototype work, I recommend sticking with rosin or resin fluxes because they are much easier to clean and available with low residue or no clean, which is good if you miss some while cleaning. One last quick point, all fluxes have a limited shelf life. Depending on the type, it can be up to three years. After all of this, you might be asking, which flux should I buy? Well, I have two suggestions. The paste style is inexpensive, available as RMA, and has a long shelf life. However, I'm not a fan of applying it with a brush, but that's me. Or, as I said before, I prefer SMD-291 in a syringe for a couple of reasons. The gel stays exactly where you put it, it leaves very little residue, and the swappable syringe tip gives you a lot of options for how it gets applied. And no joke regarding the smell, unlike some fluxes, it doesn't smell like a wet fart. For links to any of the fluxes I showed in this video, check the show notes over on the Element 14 community. Also, if you have flux questions, that is going to be the best place to ask. If I don't know the answer, I am positive we can find someone over there that does. As always, thank you for watching. For now, it is time for me to get back to removing thin oxide layers with mildly activated tree sap suspended in an alcohol solvent on my electronics workbench.